Oh, hi guys. It's uh, Thursday, November 13th, 2014. This is GGN. Uh, I spent a few hours today trying to put some articles together. Um, as far as what's new on the home front or the news home front or in the news cycles, nothing really new. It's the same old, same old narrative. Um, but um, it just escalates or continues. So, and it's a verification that we aren't going insane. Uh, we talk crazy, uh, like uh, Assad was um, fighting the terrorists that were being uh, backed, not really backed, but uh, indirectly supported by Obama, uh, the United States, the Pentagon. So uh, this is all about ideology, uh, but most importantly, it's about the ideology of globalism. And we're seeing different ideologies battle it out. Uh, if you're in the way of this globalist ideology that Obama and uh, many of his counterparts in Europe hold, uh, then you're in the way. So if you're Putin in Russia, you are the devil. And if you're Assad in Syria, you're also El Diablo. Uh, never mind uh, the fact that the U.S. has allowed um, and in a way worked with and supported um, dictators in the Middle East. Um, Gaddafi liked to go out there and, and say that he was this big enemy, but uh, really they were working with him. And, and all of these people, uh, whether it was Saddam Hussein uh, in Iraq, um, the Taliban in Afghanistan, uh, Gaddafi in Libya, uh, these people have been working with the U.S. for a long time. And uh, for whatever reason, the U.S. decided to cut them loose. Now, you have to remember this whole ISIS thing. ISIS, with uh, being a threat, uh, saying that they're a domestic threat now and they're going to blow you up. Is that like with Gaddafi or Assad, uh, these people are handing over these extremist elements um, to the U.S., uh, sharing intelligence, basically keeping uh, al-Qaeda out of out of their country so that they can trade with the U.S. and other countries. And who's going to replace these people, like in uh, Libya? Uh, these were people that worked directly with the oil companies. Uh, you know, so no ideology at all as far as, as far as this goes. These are global corporations that are taking over nation states, uh, like Assad in Syria. So it's the ideology of globalism against the ideology of nationalism or national uh, economies and ISIS is being used um, uh, to bring about this change and when they're done uh, they will most likely be you know uh, killed off uh, they don't know they're being used uh, to create a good you know a good enemy it always has to be a good enemy to sell weapons and, and make a bunch of money and uh, occupy lands I'm not saying that they're not a threat, but the only reason that these uh, that this old ancient group, this militant group, uh, exists and is getting worse is because they're being allowed to uh, by over, like I said, uh, by overthrowing these uh, these leaders that had worked with the U.S. They knew exactly what was going to happen uh, when this when this uh, when this group was radicalized and allowed to flourish. U.S. will focus on ousting Assad to defeat ISIS, so that's what they're going to do. Uh, they're now describing the strategy as Iraq first, then Syria. I'd imagine they're talking about regime change. The, this is what they say, it's new, but the Syrian strategy, or the Syria strategy, appears to be the military removal of Syrian President Assad, even though his forces are the major significant anti-ISIS force inside Syria. And officials now seem to believe that ousting Assad first and cobbling together a new regime made mostly of energy companies and corporate uh, uh, ex-CEOs and that from the non-existent moderate factions that they've been funneling weapons to that ended up in Al-Qaeda and eventually uh, ISIS's hands that the Pentagon is supposed to be creating is the key to the war. So that's that's what I don't really understand. Why would they want to get rid of uh, one of the few uh, people out there or the countries that are are, that are actually not defeating ISIS but uh, are under a heavy assault by them and are holding their own? Um, like I've mentioned before, these, uh, Syria has dealt with the American government. They've received tanks and stuff, and 
and I imagine shared intelligence as well. So, uh, and, and ISIS claims that Assad uh, in Syria and the government uh, was helping to protect Israel from these extremist elements. Why would they want to get rid of that um, that piece of the chessboard unless they really wanted them to get close and start attacking uh, Israel and wipe Syria off the map and wipe Saudi and eventually Saudi Arabia and that's what we'll get into in these videos today uh, just wipe it all out Egypt and that you're seeing a lot of destabilization in Egypt there's been attacks and stuff um, uh, three different uh, uh, articles I read about Egypt so I ultimately think that's what the goal is, is Israeli expansion and I'm not really sure if it has to do with ideology as much as it is just um, uh, just U.S. corporate uh, European corporate interests, a corporate beachhead. Let's face it, the U.S. does, you know, represent globalism. That's why they have problems or issues with uh, with countries like Russia or Syria or sometimes Iran. So this Kenneth Pollack, a policy writer at the Brookings Institute who wrote the 2009 Which Path to Persia, they're talking about Iran, uh, advocated army and funding terrorist organizations uh, to fight Iran under the cover of street protests. He also wrote something titled An Army to Defeat Assad, talking about regime change, how to turn the Syria's opposition into a real fighting force. There is, in fact, a way that the U.S. could get what it wants in Syria and ultimately in Iraq as well without sending in U.S. forces by building a new Syrian opposition army capable of defeating both Assad and the more militant Islamist. So he basically points out the real U.S. goal since 2011 has been to remove Assad from power. And it makes you wonder because if they put these people here to keep these people under control, talking about Gaddafi or Saddam or Assad, and not really put them there, but they allowed them to be there and everything work with them, was to keep these more militant Islamists uh, away so they can deal commerce, uh, or, you know, trade, as they put it. If they remove them, then they knew that these people would come back. So if they didn't put these dictators there before, wherever there was in the, what, the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, basically, period, if they weren't there before, then these militants would have been there before them. So they had to deal with these groups before. That's when you got, uh, you know, British Petroleum working in, in Iraq, uh, withdrawing uh, oil. So I'm going to read a little bit more of this uh, backdrop and then get in some more of this news. I know we're already halfway through the video, but ISIS, a pretext for U.S.-sponsored regime change in Iraq. They said the ousting of al-Maliki is part of a broader U.S. plan for Iraq and the Middle East as a whole, and this is where it gets to it. So um, it goes on and it basically says, not only has the U.S. removed a political leader who had been proven to be a problem due to his opposition to the U.S. military presence in his country, uh, and a staunch support for Assad in Syria. They created the conditions for the dismemberment of the Iraqi state. The U.S. and its allies are supporting the de facto independence for the Kurdish region and the north of the country, using the Islamic State as a convenient pretext for openly arming and supporting Kurdish forces. They said this isn't altruism. Rather, the strategy is to benefit Western oil companies with dollar signs in their eyes licking their lips in anticipation of being able to deal directly with Kurdish President Barzani. Uh, fears that U.S. weapons will fall into al-Qaeda's hands as Syrian rebels defect. This is from The Telegraph. I, I, I imagine I covered this type of article or news about a hundred times before, but moderate rebel forces lack equipment and can barely hold their positions as they are overrun by extremists in the fight against Assad. Again, this isn't like good guy versus bad guy ideology. This is this economic ideology. If ISIS would deal economically with the United States, the European Union, um, they wouldn't be considered extremists. They'd be considered moderate, and they'd be considered a transitional government. I know this to be true because the U.S. supports dictators uh, in Bahrain right now, where the people are protesting, and, and you know nothing's going to change here in Saudi Arabia. Uh, they support terrorists. They know that this that they're supporting Al Qaeda uh, to take down Assad. Uh, but there's usually a pretext, right? With um, with Saddam Hussein, uh, he was trying to introduce trading oil in what euros. Gaddafi is trying to institute uh, um, a gold currency, an African currency. It was uh, gold.
So uh, what's Assad doing? Is he not dealing or is he introducing something else? I'd imagine he doesn't have the credentials of a, of a, a British Petroleum executive. Uh, so here we go. Uh, Biden actually said this. Um, he said that uh, the Turks, the Saudis, the UAE funded and armed al-Nasra and al-Qaeda. And they had done this intentionally. This was last October. Uh, ISIL executes al-Nasra commanders in Syria and threatens to kill 100. So they executed uh, two al-Nasra front commanders in Raqqa after they defected from their group and joined that of the Islamic State. So... And Saudi Arabia has been supporting um, al-Nasra and the similar groups by funding them along with uh, Qatar. ISIL leader urges attacks in Saudi Arabia. They call for attacks in Saudi Arabia, saying the Salafit was expanding across the Arab world and called for volcanoes of jihad across the globe in a speech on Thursday. He said that the U.S.-led military campaign against his group in Syria and Iraq was failing, or is this, or is it uh, a success, right? What's the goal? Is it to create destabilization? Uh, the same Brookings Institute wants to bleed Syria to death. Um, this uh, document, the Middle East memo, calls for ending a ceasefire or peace and purposely perpetuating violence. We've seen this before. Syria faces wheat shortage, says opposition minister. And I'm wondering, like, what the hell? Is this an official post? And it says that the opposition government in Syria was formed in 2013 with the support of the U.S. and other major powers, or you can say companies. Scam, dude. It's like a lot of these people, we've covered this before, they're not even from Syria. They're not even from Syria, many of them. They speak different dialects. And they just took over places in their countryside in Syria and kicked out the residents. And we're talking about a, a de facto Kurdish independent state and using the Kurds. Uh, Kurdish fighters cut off key supply route for ISIL. They were uh, defending the besieged Syrian town of Kobani against ISIL. They were uh, cut off a key supply route used by the uh, Takfiri militants. Then Iraqi Kurds appeal for a new U.S. arms to combat Islamic State. Give them more guns. It's good for the military industrial complex. And good for just using them as pawns. Iraqi government, you know, because they don't like national governments. The, glo the globalist dudes. Uh, Iraqi government and Kurdistan uh, reach a deal on oil exports. Kind of a big deal. The Iraqi government and the semi-autonomous Kurdistan region have reached a deal over a controversial Kurdish oil exports and payments, payments to Kurdish civil servants. But it always comes down to what? The ideology of money. <laughs> ISIS sells stolen Kirkuk oil at $20 per barrel, says the Iraq Finance Minist Ministry. So they've seized oil fields and refineries. These militants are Islam, basically ISIS. They're selling hijack oil in the black market for a price as low as $20 per barrel. This is what I was talking about last time I, I made some GGN videos, right? Uh, uh, the globalists, uh, especially the U.S. and the petrodollar, don't like terrorists. This ISIL state who doesn't want to deal with them, uh, underbidding them and competing against them as far as oil prices go. How much does ISIS make on selling oil from November 10th, 2014? So, yeah, it says here this is a discount of 75%. The global market price is steadily declining, so they're underbidding them. The, uh, Iraq says what? Uh, those who buy oil from these guys uh, to inform the international community on it for taking appropriate action. Talk about the cartel of, uh, of oil countries, OPEC and that. All the people that talk about, you know, democracy and freedom and oppress their own people. Obama represents U.S. and Arabic aristocracies against those of Russia and Iran. Obama's secret deals with Saudi Arabia and Qatar. They ask what's behind lower gas prices and the bombing of Syria and eastern Ukraine. You can go in there and check that out. This is from globalresearch.ca article. That's right. Uh, oil is uh, below $80 a barrel. The Islamic State seizes second gas field in Syria in a week. Damn it, that's a problem. We need to get on it. We need to fund these moderates to take down Assad, to take down ISIL. U.S.'s Hegel says ISIL campaign advances. He says that they're making progress. We are three months into a multi-year effort. Well, that doesn't sound too good, does it? To find progress, U.S.-led airstrikes hit oil field in Syria. One that 
The U.S. military is considering sending combat troops to battle ISIS in Iraq as Obama authorizes 1,500 U.S. troops in Iraq. But 50 U.S. troops have just arrived in Iraq, preparing the way for a larger contingent. Thank you.